Hey guys, welcome back to Sons of Oklahoma. You know, today I thought I'd go over a couple of things with you here. And, uh, it's a new project I'm working on. And some of the things that I did to achieve recrowning and making new front and rear sights for this gun and other guns like it and different techniques I've used. You know, over the past couple of days I've gotten a lot of questions about this little guy right here. And as always, guys, you know me, a weapons are safety check and clear. But uh, I never really got to go over it in detail how I did some of the things on this guy. For example, how exactly did I get my sight here to the proper height? How did I add the little white dot to it? And how exactly did I achieve my recrown? Which I'm really hoping the camera is picking up right now. That's always a pain in the butt. But uh, let's go ahead and go over some of that. All right, first and foremost, let's start off with the, the new project here. This is an old Marlin single shot 22 rifle. And I picked this guy up at a pawn shop because it's one of the hobbies of mine that I, I really love doing. I call it pawn shop rescue. I love finding these old guns like this. It, you know, people have just sit around and didn't really take care of them all that well and let them rust out or get these cracks in them but you know each one of these cracks and each one of these little dents is a story in this gun's history but I figure since I'm going to be rescuing it and making it my little truck carbine or survival rifle that I'd completely redo this one and let it start a new story and a new chapter all together so all of these dents and dings you know, if it was a collectible gun, that'd be a bad thing to do, taking a lot of that history away, but that's what I want to do with this rifle. I want to give it a new life and a new journey. So let's get into, first off, how exactly to achieve my recrown. Alright guys, give me just a second here and I'll explain it a little bit better. Okay, I'm sure you guys have seen one of these little guys like this laying around everywhere. You know, some of them will be a star wrench, some of them will be... Maybe an Allen head, you know, flat head, four away, what have you. But what we're interested in is this little back part right here. You can see it has a slight bevel around its edge there. And what I did is I turned this thing around backwards and I put it into my hand drill. And yeah, this is Bubba, Bubba Gunsmithing at its finest. But what I did is I applied valve grinding compound to it and to the flat end of the muzzle. After, of course, making our cut, now I cut this one to be 17 inches long to give it that shorter style to it, you know, carbine style. And uh, after facing the muzzle off here, just as flat as I could get it, I went ahead and I got in there real good and got to recrowning it. Now you can see a bit of the crown right there as I rotate the gun. We want to make sure that all of our rifling ends pretty much at the exact same length as each other so that when the bullet exits the barrel it exits all the it disengages all the rifling at the same time this will allow your bullet to stabilize and stay straight instead of tumbling out of the end of the barrel and I did all that with this guy here now truth be told you're really supposed to use a brass a br I think it's brass I believe it's brass you can check it out at I believe Midway USA on YouTube, they have a, a great gunsmith there by the name of Larry Potterfield. That's where I learned pretty much all my gunsmithing techniques. Another few I kind of made up along the way. But he really knows what he's talking about, and he just so happens to be a professional gunsmith and had just the perfect tool for recrowning a gun, which is made of brass, and it's really round at all. And what he does, he puts his into a lathe, and he gets in there very well, and making sure to work this thing back and forth and up and down to achieve a very good crown. Now for my backwoods Oklahoma ways of gunsmithing, this actually turned out to work pretty well. Uh, it's actually the same tool I used on all three of these guns. Here we have the 4-inch Heritage, our 2-inch Heritage, and our Marlin Rifle. And all of their recrowning was achieved using the same tool. And guys, I've tested all these guns out. Absolutely all of them work flawlessly. No keyhole, 
bullets stay straight, and they pretty much hit their target very well. Okay, when it comes down to our front sight here, now I had the original front sight that came off of this Marlin rifle, but not using a vice and not using proper tools and techniques, I pretty much destroyed it trying to remount it to this rifle. If you look closely, you can see all these little potholes through here that I had to fill back in because I could not for the life of me, with that hand drill especially, get it to straighten up. So I figured, what the heck, I'll just do it like I did all the revolvers. This is pretty much the same bolt that we've used in that revolver and that one as the front sight. And guys, for a bolt, these things turned out very well. When I took this guy out to the range, I was making shots at 15, 20, 30 yards with no problem driving tacks with it. I even took one shot at 200 yards and hit my target. You know, this back end here, all it is is a, believe it or not, this is a part of a kit that you can get at Walmart for hanging pictures. This is a little brass clip, and this is just a simple eye bolt that I drilled a hole into and JB welded it in. Now, I am going to go back with silver solder and make that bond a whole lot stronger. Not really that it needs it, but for riding around the back of my truck, you know, or under the toolbox or under the seat, this thing is going to need a lot of strength bouncing around back there but for what they are just being literally a couple bolts these sides worked out very well as you can see on this one I flattened off the back side of it if this thing will focus correctly just like I did the other ones I flattened off the sides of it and it really does make for a great sight now, I pretty much lucked out on its height. I just tried to match it as best I could to the original sight that was destroyed. When it came to the revolvers, initially what I did was after I cut the barrel here off on both revolvers, I took the end that still had the blade sight on it, and I turned it upside down, and I laid it on top of this bolt to make sure that that blade sight and this bolt were both the same height. So the blade sight would be touching this barrel, and this bolt would be touching the opposite barrel, assuring that the height was correct on both. And it worked out flawlessly. These things hit right on the money. Now, originally, I did have the shotgun bead sight on this one, and that thing was hitting way, way too low. But after bringing that up and drilling a small hole here into the end of that bolt after facing it off and making sure that it wasn't going to snag on nothing, smoothing it out with a file. I was able to make a small hole and fill it with nail polish to make a white dot sight. I went with a smaller one on this gun, and monkeying around, I went with a larger one on this gun. This one, I kind of have to hold about halfway on it, about right there to make it an accurate shot. But it works. I mean, you can really pick up that sight really well and really quick if you had to use... You know, at least 22s for self-defense. Or just hunting in general. But yeah, guys, it's not just nail polish over a bolt. I actually drilled a hole into the bolt and put the nail polish into the hole. That way, even coming in and out of the holster, that sight can't rub off. It's protected by the steel all the way around the hole. And I really like the sight picture on it. Anyway, guys, that's just some of the things that I did to these guns and a little bit more detail on how I did it. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for, you know, all the questions and comments here lately. I really do appreciate it. I'm up to 31 subscribers now. That is awesome. I hope you guys continue to like the videos and the content that I'm coming out with. And uh, here in just a couple days, maybe when I get a day off work or something, we'll actually get to get out to the range and do some shooting videos for a change. These past couple videos have been fun, but I really miss shooting. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you downrange.